Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to a new episode of The Quran and Science. This is your host, Tamir Mumtaz, welcoming our dear professor, Dr. Zaghloul al Naggar, head of committee on scientific facts in the glorious Quran, Supreme Council on Islamic Affairs, welcoming our dear guests, brother Mustafa and brother Fuad. And today's episode is By the Sky That Returns. But before we continue with our topic, we'll listen to a recitation of the verse from Surah Al-Tariq, verse number 11. By the sky that is given the capacity to return. Professor. Yes. We spoke about the sky, and I just, uh, I hope that before we continue, uh, in the episode where we spoke about the sky, you said that our solar system is just a small part of the sky. A very tiny part of it. A very tiny part of it. Yes. Uh, how do we know that this is the first sky? Or is it the seven skies? Or who put the limits that this is this, the first sky and there is another sky? How do we know that? In the name of Allah, our Creator, the creator of the universe and of everything that's in it. I greet you all and your audience in our Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa May Allah peace, wa peace wa blessings wa and mercy be with you all. Uh, first of all, astronomers can only deal with what they see. And they only see a small part of the first firmament or the first sky. They don't see anything above it. So they don't believe in seven heavens or seven uh, firmaments or seven skies. And as I said in, in another episode, unless Allah has told us that he has created seven uh, firmaments, uh, there was no way in front of man to uh, uh, investigate this or see it or follow it up. Because the universe is so vast, so immense, so uh, complex, that um, we cannot see everything in it. We only see a small part of it. Uh, but stemming from the Holy Quran and from the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I came to realize that um, Mecca is at the, at the center of the universe. And the globe, the earth, is at the center of the universe. Uh, let me first of all say the globe is at the center of the universe. The f seven earths are all included in our earth. Yes. And Mecca is at the center of the first earth. And being in the center, the whole globe, in the center of the universe, so Mecca is in the center of the universe. Okay. In as much as the seven earths envelop each other, the seven firmaments or seven uh, skies or seven heavens also uh, envelop each other. The uh, seven globes envelop each other. So how can we see them? We are right in the center, you see. So we can only see a small sector of the first firmament. And that's why um, secular scholars can only speak about what they see and touch and feel. And they speak about galaxies, galactic uh, gatherings, uh, constellations, uh, groups of stars, uh, uh, and the like, you see. They, they describe what they see. So with the scientists, there is only one sky. They speak about, they don't even call it sky. Ah. They speak about the, the universe. Okay. And they imagine that this is everything. Mm -hmm. And they, can, they don't believe in anything that they cannot see. Uh, so the, the universe is so complex, so vast, so immense, that um, man uh, being uh, living on that planet, 
he can only see a small fraction of what's around him or around her. And uh, that's why the Holy Quran uh, usually uh, encourages Muslims to ponder about the universe, look into the horizons around themselves, look into themselves. And uh, there are a great number of verses in the Holy Quran that encourage men to meditate and think and ponder about the universe. Because looking into the universe, you can see some reflections on the qualities of the Creator. The greatness of the universe reflect on the greatness of the Creator. The uh, orderly uh, running of the universe reflects something about the power of the Creator, His wisdom, His knowledge. And that's why uh, we cannot see our Creator, but we can see His creation and we can conclude some of His uh, supreme qualities from what He has created. Well, that makes me think of a question. Yes. In the Quran, it is mentioned that stars decorated, decorates the lowest heaven. The yes. lowest heaven is decorated with stars. That's exactly. So well, this is just. Uh, this does is this an have any relation point. with what yeah. we're speaking with? In the, indeed, indeed. Okay. The, this is a very, a very good point, and I was coming to it, because the Quran emphasizes that stars are the ornament of the first firmament alone. Yeah. Other firmaments wouldn't know. Uh, what, uh, how can we detect them? And that's why uh, astronomers work on stars. And so long they work on stars, they are in the first firmament. Oh, but so this, this is, is only like, from the this Quran. This is our proof that this sky is the first sky. Because yes, it is the yes. only sky that is decorated. And with with, with the stars and uh, the satellites of stars. Yes. Oh, so by the sky that returns. You see, uh, this verse comes in sort of the Tariq. And a tariq means the, the knocking star. The knocking star. Knocking star. And the uh, surah starts by wasamai wa tariq, by the firmament and the knocking star. And um, early commentators on the Quran wondered what would be the knocking star. They said a tariq is the knocker. And in the early days, all the uh, big cities used to have walls around the city with big gates and these gates would be closed at night immediately after sunset and anybody coming after sunset he had to knock at the door so in Arabic a tariq means uh, somebody who is coming uh, late at night and knocking at your door you see so they said what comes at night they said stars mm -hmm. stars appear at night and they disappear during the day so they said, was wa tariq And then the question is addressed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And any question addressed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran is equally addressed to all his followers. was wa tariq wa ma adraka ma tariq What do you think a tariq is? You see? And then the answer comes, an najm al thaqib The piercing star. Uh, of course, at that time, nobody knew anything about stars. They thought all stars are alike. So they said it's an ordinary star. And the ordinary star pierces the, dark, pierces the firmament by its light. And this was quite, quite good, no, no harm in that. But only in the, towards the end of the 20th century, in the late 1970s, uh, uh, it was discovered that stars have got a life cycle. Uh, stars are born, they have uh, a youthfulness or a youth stage, uh, they have uh, a mature stage, they have an old age stage, and then they start exploding and dying into smoke. And as we said earlier, stars are created from smoke and they end into smoke. And this is a testimony to the um, might of the Creator, because we also are created from Earth, and finally we go back to Earth. And. Uh, they said uh, during the, fa the dying phases of stars, as a result of excessive temperature and excessive pressures, uh, matter at the core of the star is condensed. And the result of this explosion of a supernova is what we call a neutron star. And the neutron star is uh, so compact, so condensed, that the electrons in the orbits of, uh, of, of uh, the nuclei of atoms, which carry a negative charge, meet the proton at the core, which carries a positive charge. So they become neutralized, 
and that's why they call them neutron stars. Neutron stars are small size stars. Uh, the diameter does not exceed uh, 20 kilometers, 18 to 20 kilometers. But they have a fantastic density, a density of uh, around 1 billion tons for a cubic centimeter. And because of this, they, they revolve around their own axes at a fantastic speed. Uh, almost 30 times, they complete the revolution 30 times every second. And they radiate radio waves. Mm. They, uh, they uh, send out radio waves. And these radio waves knock our sky, knock the uh, atmosphere of the Earth in exactly the same way somebody is, knocks at the door to, <laughs> to be opened for him. And that's why the Quran calls it at tariq And uh, it's a, a, a amazing, really, for a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago to speak about a knocking star. And only in the late 70s of the 20th century, uh, scientists come to discover that we physically have <laughs> knocking stars. And these stars, by the radio waves, they knock the atmosphere of the Earth. And I have recorded this knocking. And you cannot really have a word to describe it better than a tariq. Professor, the term knocking star no. was given to this star by yes. who? By the scholars? By uh, no, they call them pulsars, oh. uh, from the pulse of the, of the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, scientists call it pulsar. And some of them call it no a knocking star. And the term pulsar was not known until uh, the late 1970s. Mm -hmm. So for a book revealed more than 14 centuries ago, to speak about this type of stars uh, is something absolutely amazing. So the toric represent a type of star, not one a type specific of star. Yeah. star. And, and, and actually the, the, the yeah. verses mm -hmm. uh, specify a particular star. Yeah, okay. So it says, yeah. by the firmament and the knocking star. What do you think, Muhammad or any Muslim follower, mm -hmm. what do you think the tariq is? And then the answer comes, النجم الثاقب, the piercing star. But that makes me wonder, Dr. Zaglul, regarding the, uh, the old explanation or the old tafsir uh, to this uh, uh, surah, yes. right? And uh, was it, where, do, where did the, the, the old Muslims, the, the first Muslims, ancient Muslims, if I may call them that, did they get it from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mouth or did uh, they predict it or how did they Of course, you see, it? Um, <clears throat> as I said earlier, mm -hmm. one of the beauties of the Holy Quran mm -hmm. is that the verse comes in a few words. Right. And every generation can see in these few words a meaning. Mm -hmm. And these meanings unfold with time mm -hmm. so that the Quran will remain always encompassing human knowledge, whatever level this human knowledge can reach. But the word knocking, yes. The word knocking. When we hear the word knocking, we think of disturbance. Yes. Does it disturb the atmosphere of the earth or? Uh, no, it does. Of course, if you record it as a, as, as, as a sound, you change the radio waves into sound waves, and you can hear it exactly, mm -hmm. similar to somebody knocking at the door. But we can't hear it here. No, we cannot hear it here. Okay. You have to have uh, 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 radio devices. telescopes okay. to catch it and mm -hmm. change it into sound waves. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. So um, the, this uh, short surah contains uh, an, an, a, a great knowledge, a vast knowledge of science. And one of it is the verse which he, we have chosen to, as the title of this episode, was Sama'i that al -Rajh, because we are still talking about as -sama, the mm -hmm. firmament. Was Sama'i that al -Rajh means by the firmament that has the capacity to return. To return what? Uh, early scholars said the most valuable things that returns to us from the sky is rain. So they said uh, by the firmament that has got the capacity to send down rain. Because uh, water vapor rises from uh, the earth, uh, it rises up to find a cool zone where it condenses and comes back. So the rain came from... Originally from, from the earth, earth, yes. And it will return to us. It has to return back to us. Okay, so I think we'll go for a short break and we continue after the break. Okay. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, viewers. <laughs> Labaik Allahumma labaik Labaik Allahumma labaik Labaik la sharika The talbiya, as we all know, is when a Muslim would say Labaik Allahumma labaik Labaik la sharika laka labaik 
إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك. Should not say that every Muslim should perform Hajj. And when we are performing the Hajj, we need to reach this perfection by seeking the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone, by seeking help from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and making sure that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows best, and we do not know what is good for us. The Kaaba is not the bricks that is being built. The Kaaba is what is behind or what's behind the meanings of Al Kaaba, the first house of worship. If a person would know the wisdom behind every move that a person do in matters of worship, then where's the submission comes into the full meanings of it. To remember what Hajar, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when she went from the Safa to the Marwa, so concerned and disturbed about the affairs of her child Ismail when he was laying some time some place between the Safa and the Marwa crying because of the shortage of food and water <laughs> Welcome back, and Professor Zaghlul was telling us about the sky that returns. So water goes up from our land and the sky returns it back. Yes, water is evaporated by the heat of the sun. Uh, it goes into clouds, and then this cloud uh, moves into a, a zone of uh, very low temperature. It can reach up to minus 60 degrees centigrade on top of the equator. And it is a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cause the air to cool down gradually as you go up. Although we are approaching the sun, we are going closer to the sun, yet one of the miracles of creation is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused this zone of the atmosphere to cool up gradually so that once water is evaporated from the earth, it finds a cool surface at which it condenses and comes down as rain. So this zone is as if it's conditioned. Yes, yes. So early commentators on this verse said that the most valuable thing that comes down to us from sky is rain. But if it is so, why didn't the Quran read by the sky that returns rain or returns water? Why the Quran said only by the sky that has got the capacity to return? Uh, actually, it is the capacity to return whatever is sent up to it or down on it. So this is a capacity. Uh, Allah has given uh, the, the atmosphere of the earth uh, so that it can be a protective zone for life on the surface of that planet. And uh, nowadays we find 10 forms of returning material or returning energy, um, either from the ground going up to the sky, coming back to ground, or from the outer atmosphere on top of the atmosphere of the earth, uh, going back to the open space. It's like cosmic radiation? For like example. cosmic radiation. But let's just speak about some of what the, the sky returns. The very first thing returned by the atmosphere of the Earth, which is part of the sky, uh, is sound, sound waves. And, and unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this atmosphere a particular chemical and physical composition, we could have never uh, hear our, uh, each other. You see, because unless this air has got a certain density, a certain uh, physical chemical characteristics, it could have never sent back sound waves. And if so, nobody could hear anything. And imagine if we lived on this planet without being able to hear each other, life would have been virtually impossible. So the first thing is a sound waves, echo, because the first th thing that returns to us is the echo of the sound. Secondly, we know that uh, dust storms can raise from the soil of the earth lots of uh, uh, dust particles. Yeah. And actually, these can enrich certain areas, can be very useful to move from one area to the other. And we know that most dust particles that are uh, raised from the earth come back to earth. Uh, most of the material that comes from the vents of volcanoes during volcanic eruption come back to earth. Some of it escape to outer space, but most of it come back to Earth. So, so anything that rises from Earth to the 
uh, upper atmosphere to the uh, lower atmosphere even, it comes back to us. Uh, thirdly, we have rain, which is one of the most valuable things that comes back to us from sky. Without it, life would have been impossible on the surface of that planet. Uh, clouds that send back rain uh, send back heat because the earth is heated during the day by the sun rays. Most of that heat is taken by the rocks of the earth. Once the sun sets, this heat is irradiated and more than 90% of that heat is reflected back by the clouds. And they call this the heat return. Al-Raja' mm. al-Harari. Uh, this heat return was not known before. Is this uh, the greenhouse effect? Uh, no, no. The greenhouse effect is the product of, of uh, pollution. Okay. But this is an, a natural phenomenon that every day uh, the, the earth is heated by the sun. Once the sun sets, uh, the heat that has been absorbed by the rocks of the earth are irradiated to the sky. And then the, the clouds that send rain also send heat. So the sky is returning a lot of things, not There's just a lot of, thing. Definitely. Right. <laughs> not only shadow. Exactly. Yes, yeah. The clouds <clears throat> themselves uh, send back 49% of the uh, radiations of the sun. Mm. Otherwise, it would have been burned, actually. Yeah. So this is a, a, a returning to outer space. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is what we see, and we can count uh, nowadays at least 10 types of return. Um, above the clouds, uh, we see uh, the ozone layer. The ozone layer can send back ultraviolet radiation, or most of it. It can only allow a very small fraction to reach the Earth, which is needed for life. But most of the ultraviolet radiation, which is uh, very oh, harmful well. radiation, mm. it penetrates the body, causes skin cancer, causes uh, lots of eye diseases, uh, can burn forests and burn animals and plants. Uh, this is sent back to outer space. Above that, we find uh, the uh, ionosphere. And the ionosphere uh, is a charged zone, uh, a zone full of ions. Mm -hmm. Uh, electrically charged particles. Uh, this can be used to send back radio waves and telecommunication waves. And without the, this, a form of return, which was not known until the 20th century. Uh, above that, or within the ionosphere itself, we have the radiation belts, which are known as the Van Allen's belts. They send most of the cosmic radiation, which are actually back lethal to, the, to life. Yeah. So the returning but, is both returning both backward ways. Returning back to the universe. Back to the universe. All yes. for the benefit of mankind. Or the benefit of life on the surface of that oh, planet. You see. Uh, above that, we find the magnetosphere. Magnetosphere also plays a very important role in combating uh, cosmic radiation away from the Earth. And it allows the cosmic uh, particle, cosmic radiation, to revolve around the Earth without entering to the lower atmosphere. Uh, above that, we have the exosphere, outer space. And most of these zones can help in uh, expelling or uh, uh, sending away uh, many harmful uh, forms of matter and energy that come from the sun or from other stars. And all these zones also play a very important part in, uh, in burning um, uh, meteorites into meteors. And, of course, only uh, small quantities of uh, dust can, uh, or ash can reach the Earth. So uh, we know today at least ten forms, five forms of useful forms of matter and energy that rise from the Earth and are returned back to Earth by the sky, and five forms of matter and energy that come from outer space to our atmosphere and are sent back by these zones. So with one word, the so glorious nice. Quran has ex expressed this beautiful character of the sky, without which life would have been virtually impossible on the surface of our planet. But I'm a bit confused here. Yes. The ionosphere is higher than the ozonosphere. Yes. Right? But the ozonosphere returns back radiation yes. from the sun. Yes. And the ionosphere, which is above it, returns back radio waves to the earth. Yes. 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 It's amazing. <laughs> and also... It's amazing. And actually the returning back, of these cosmic radiations plays a part in the ionization of the ionosphere. Oh. It's a very collective word, actually. It I mean, is. It is very, indeed. very much. It is indeed. Like with one word. Everything in one word. With one word. Exactly. A and that's why the Quran said, Was Sama'i that Yes. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, 
when a, a, a Quranic verse comes in the context mm -hmm. of an oath, we all believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above giving an oath. Mm -hmm. uh, who are we that uh, Allah will give us an oath? An oath is usually given by the weaker to the stronger, yes. uh, to the small, from the smaller to the greater. Yeah. Uh, but when a, a Quranic verse comes in the context of an oath, this is a way of directing our attention to the importance of the matter by which the oath has been given. So we can so, go on and uh, do some researches. <laughs> Inshallah. Exactly. Inshallah. Inshallah. Professor Zaghul, also uh, our deeds, our deeds, the deeds that we do, yes. they are also returning from... Uh, no, they are not returning. They are being recorded and they will be exposed yes, to you I in the day, day of judgment. A film. Each one of us will receive a recorded film. And he will be asked, Read your own book and judge yourself. Yes, but one of the scholars said that if, the deeds, if our deeds go up to yes. the sky and they are good, then the, the circumstances will come from the sky and they are good also. But this is not the, um, this is a metaphoric way of saying it because if you do something good, Allah will know it, yes. and Allah will send a reward for it. Yes. This is the meaning of it. You see, yeah. Allah will send your reward, and this reward comes from from above. Yes. So uh, I was just wondering, uh, you said that the sky also returns heat. Yes. Yeah. What is uh, is it only the purpose of conditioning the earth? Uh, because if the sun sets. Without this heat return, uh, we would have uh, uh, been frozen completely. Uh, we, uh, animals, plants, uh, the earth would, would, would freeze. Mm. Uh, so it's a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the clouds that send down rain, they are the same clouds that send down heat to us. And strangely enough, uh, this lower zone of the atmosphere is named scientifically the troposphere. And tropos mean means the sphere that returns. <laughs> troposphere <laughs> means the sphere that returns. That's in Latin. The tropos in Latin means, yeah. yes, the sphere, exactly, mm -hmm. as if it is a, an exact translation of the word ar -raja. And that was found out how many years ago? Uh, of course, uh, very late in the 20th century. Yeah. But uh, the returning also has an effect. For example, during the summer, yes. it's very hot. Yes. And during the night, it's very cold. Yes. Does this have any relation to what you're saying? Uh, you see, in, in, in summer, uh, we have uh, a wind driven from the sea to land mm. due to the variation in the atmospheric pressure. So you have a breeze coming from the sea to land due to the heat on the land. Okay. Uh, because if you heat the air, uh, you actually reduce its density and then they become a law of uh, depression. And, and this attracts uh, air currents uh, from cooler zones. Mm. Uh, during winter time, you see, the earth would be cooler than, than the sea. And that's why the, uh, uh, the, the cool, uh, 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 sorry, uh, we will uh, cooler than the sea. And the, uh, actually, we will get uh, lighter, warmer wind from the sea to warm the earth. Uh, so this is, again, uh, uh, the, the transformation of, of heat uh, has something to do with the uh, pressure of the air, yeah. uh, whether you have a high pressure zone or a low pressure but zone. But there's one thing also confusing me. Yes. In science, there is a law that hot air rises. How can the sky return hot air uh, make it coming down? Um, you see, uh, the, uh, uh, the clouds reflect any uh, waves, any heat waves that are sent up to it. Okay. So uh, they just reflect it, although it's a very cool zone, as I said, minus 60 degrees centigrade mm. uh, above the equator. Yet uh, the reflection is so swift, uh, so quick, uh, that it does not uh, get the chance to be actually cool. It mm. goes up and comes down immediately. It goes up and comes down immediately. Yeah. Doctor, how can the volcanic eruptions, when they return, how could they be useful? Because, you see, you have lots of uh, gases uh, that come out from volcanic vents, uh, lots of ashes uh, that come up from the volcanic vents, and uh, the greatest thing that comes from volcanic vents is uh, water vapor. Uh, more than 70% of the gases coming out from volcanic eruptions is water vapor. And this water vapor, as it condenses in the clouds, comes back as rain. And this is one of the most valuable uh, additions of the water on the surface of our planet. 
And uh, recently, uh, most uh, secular uh, scholars speak about uh, fighting for water, uh, struggling for water. And they say the amount of water on the surface of our planet is limited and the population is steadily increasing. So people have to fight for water. And uh, they don't know that Allah who has uh, created that water from within molten magma uh, at temperatures more than 1,000 degrees centigrade is capable of sending more water through volcanic vents. So one of the most valuable things that come out from volcanic vents is water vapor. Uh, secondly, we have carbon dioxide. And the carbon dioxide is the basic element from which all the food chain is produced uh, through the uh, photosynthesis of plants. Oh, yeah. And you get the carbohydrates, sugars, starches, uh, cellulosic material. All this comes out of carbon dioxide. Subhanallah. So this very dangerous lava sea is, 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 is very, very useful. Very useful, very much. Very needed. interesting. Yes. We wish to continue, but sadly we have come to the end of this episode. We'll continue later. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, our dear guests. Mm -hmm. Thank you, viewers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa